Hello value viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. Today we're in the MiG-29A. We're going to be looking at the IRST, IR guided missiles, close range modes and air to air gunnery. The modes we're going to be looking at are the IR mode using the IRST to find a target and then handing that off to the sensors on the missiles. The second mode will be close combat mode again using the IRST and then handing that off to the missiles. Then using the helmet mounted sight which again drives the IRST handing the target off to the missiles. Similar it's going to be the OPT using the IRST handing off to missiles then the bore sight mode which does not use the IRST it just uses the missile sensors then we're going to be using our lead computed gun sight which does use the IRST and then the funnel gun sight without the IRST the cool thing about the MiG-29 is its sensors are integrated the radar works with the IRST and vice versa and they both work with the seekers on the missiles first controls we're going to be using today first will be the target acquisition symbol button otherwise known as a TDC on NATO jets forward back left and right to lock a target we're going to be using lock on press and hold to reject or lose a target track break lock to fire a missile press and hold missile trigger regards guns there are of course the first detent of gun trigger and the second detent the first detent will put us in guns mode it's a push and hold affair whereas the second detent you push and hold to actually fire the weapon in terms of weapons, so we can switch between our innermost weapons, which are going to be our more long-range weapons with external stores inboard, and our smaller weapons with outboard. In terms of the modes that we're going to be using, weapons control system modes selector knob, I would suggest binding HOTAS commands to the following. IR is going to be our first mode that we talked about. Close combat, helm or helmet mounted sight. OPT if you're going to want to use that and bore sight if you're going to want to use that. Finally, if we're using the IRST, it's really useful to have this bind set. That is IR gain clockwise and counterclockwise. That's a rheostat knob that allows us to adjust the gain. That's really useful, as we'll see in a minute. Regards our scenario, we're in a MiG-29. Let me pause that. We're 500 knots or so. We're chasing 10 miles behind an F-15E going the same speed, and he's producing a decent amount of heat. But critically, he's not very high. He's only just above the mountain. Mountain top. So we're going to unpause, we're going to pretty much match his speed. The first mode we're going to go in is IR. I could either use the knob like that to go to IR or I can use the button that we found earlier. So this puts us in an, in an IR search mode. We can tell that we're in an IR mode because that's Cyrillic for IR. You guys, by the way, tell me you can change the Cyrillic to English symbols. I haven't found out how to do that, so please let me know if that is possible. What that's doing is showing us a two-dimensional raster image of the thermal returns that the IRST here is seeing. A very important point here is the orientation. This raster image is not stabilized to the horizon, so if I point my aircraft up the whole image would be orientated up as well unlike a radar the radar is always stabilized to the horizon so if I point my aircraft up the radar points itself down to match the horizon or any adjustment that you've done above or below it and that's done by design the IRST can be used with or instead of the radar. Why you might want to use it instead of the radar is a perfect example here. We're chasing an F-15, we've been directed to him, but we don't want to let him know that we're here. Our radar can be detected by him and he'll know the game is up. But if we use our IRST, it's a purely passive sensor and so it can't be detected. So that's an ideal use for the IRST. It's best used in a lookup scenario to make sure that we're below the hostile looking up rather above looking down and we'll see why in a minute in terms of advantages over the radar we've touched on the fact that it is passive so it can't be detected generally also it's going to be immune to electronic countermeasures disadvantages are generally speaking it's much shorter in range the range it has depends on the scenario how hot the hostile is and how that contrasts on the sky behind also, it's heavily affected by environmental conditions, including locality to the sun. In terms of what we actually see here, any green dots are thermal returns. These are not aeroplanes, they are general thermal returns from the ground. 
hot trees, hot stones, stuff like that. What we're looking for is a larger dot. The larger the dot, the hotter the source. The aeroplane is obviously going to be hotter than stones and trees, so it's going to be a larger dot. So we've got to search in this maze of dots here to find our target. To help us with that, we can change the gain, how sensitive the sensor is. Remember, I mentioned this guy here, which I've bound my control to. Roughly match his speed. I'm now going to turn the gain down, and it takes a few seconds to update. There you go. If you're wondering what that Cyrillic NN is on the left that's shouting at me, that just means that it's picking up interference, which is those ground contacts. If I were to move my cursor out the way, you can actually see that snapshot there, that bigger dot there, I can tell you, is that F15, where well, we've got a few returns. Just for the purposes of the video, I'm going to turn the gain back up to make it as difficult to use as possible. I'm going to pause at this moment because in the manual it says if we're going to try using the IRST, we should do two things beforehand. Tell the system the wingspan of the aircraft it's looking for. I don't know why it would need to know this, but again, that's what it says in the manual. Set it to medium at the moment, which in my mind is something like 50 or 60 feet, which is going to match roughly what he is. Secondly, we've got to tell the system the hemisphere of the target that we're looking for. We can have... FHS, forward hemisphere, or RHS down at the bottom there, rear hemisphere. And we know we're in a chase, so we're going for rear hemisphere. Now, I can't see a lot at the moment. Let's be going down here and deliberately highlight him against the sky and see if that helps us pick him up. Obviously, it's going to be easier for us to see him against the sky where he's not going to be interfered with by ground returns. But as I can see it there, you can see it in the middle of that box there, there is a bigger dot. The lower I go, the higher he is, the easier and more stable that dot is. There's almost no interference around him now. Now look what happens if I were to climb and highlight him against the ground. Otherwise, everything else being equal, I'll just speed it up to save time. What's going to happen is he's fully disappeared now. He's still there, he's still making the same heat, but there's so much interference around him, I can't see him anymore. And that's because it's important, as I said at the beginning, to highlight him against a cold or relatively cold sky. The system is a 1980s system. It can only do so much processing. Obviously, a DAS on an F-35 would be able to pick him out easily. Okay, so that's just looking at limitations of the system. I'm going to put him where I can see him again there. In terms of range, there is no max or min range. As I said, it depends how much interference there is around him and how hot his signal is. So the next thing to do is lock him. We can see his dot. I know it's a bit hard to see, but I can see the dot there. I'm going to put my uh, cursor on it with my acquisition commands. I'm going to... He will disappear every now and then, but it's still a good solid contact. I'm going to press and hold lock on. If I can lock him, I can. I'm going to pause there just to look at the symbology. We now have a lock. We have our range scale here up to five miles, but it's very important to say above 3.5 miles, we cannot ascertain his range. It's a limit of the IRST system. Once he gets within 3.5 miles, it'll automatically fire a laser rangefinder to get his range. At that point, we have range information. Note, when our laser range fire fires, we are no longer completely undetectable because lasers, of course, can be detected by missile warning systems. So what I'm saying, if you ever fire above 3.5 miles, you'll never actually know if you're in range to hit him or not. Otherwise, a Cyrillic A has appeared, meaning that we have a target track. Weapons information. Currently, we have inboard pylon selected. It's an R27T. Here we can see that we have an IR lock, but there are no missile numbers above it, and that's because we've not been able to hand off the IR track onto the missiles yet. When it does do the handoff, the numbers will appear. That's usually due to contrast and range. So let's unpause. Okay, literally as I said it. I'm just going to pause it there. We're going to have to do a lot of pausing today. So now it's handed off successfully to missile one, two, three, and four. But hang on a minute. I've equipped more missiles. I've deliberately done it awkwardly. I've got two Alamos, one and two. Three and four are two 1984 archers. And on the outermost stations are older missiles. They're aphids with much less sensitive seekers. So one and two have the target information and essentially can fire now and... They're selected. If I were to move to my outer stations by pressing the outer station button, let me just unpause here. 
press it now. Now stations five and six are selected, the R60Ms, and we have a track on the target. We can see that and they're selected, but the numbers aren't there, meaning that we are unable to hand off the information to the 60Ms because, of course, they can't see them yet. So that's how the weaponeering works here. I'm going to reselect the Alamos. Now, we've got a Cyrillic NP there, meaning LA in English, meaning launch authority. We do have launch authority to fire, but remember, it doesn't know the range, so it doesn't know if we can actually hit the target or not, hence why it's flashing. So it's basically saying, fire if you want, you've technically got IR credentials, but I don't know if you've got kinematic credentials. If we want to ensure kinematic credentials, we have to get within 3.5 miles, so let's do that. In fact, there's one more thing I should say. You can override the flashing NP or LA if you want by pressing this button, prepare switch you can have it auto or manual all that means is it overrides the laser range finding so if i were to put it on manual now the np or la would no longer flash it doesn't actually really help you it doesn't allow you to laser range further away but that option's there if you want it i'm pausing Oh, there we go. You can see we now finally know how far he is away. He's 3.5 miles because the laser range is on. We now have where's or weapon engagement zone information. We can see the minimum range of our missile is there. The no escape range of our missile is there. And the maximum range is slightly above. So with it, we're within range to fire. And the NP or LA is no longer flashing. At this point, as long as we have our cursor in our aiming circle here, we can fire to get an optimum shot. Obviously, press and hold missile fire, and the missile will fire, and I can guarantee it will track. But we don't want to do that because I want to show the other modes off first. So what I'm going to do at this point is unpause. I'm going to press break lock. It will break the lock immediately and go back to the IR surge. At this point, I'm just going to back off a little bit. I don't want it to close too much. We're going to go to our second mode, which is close combat, which is the CC on that guy there, which I've all got bound because I'm getting my plane set up as we go. We now get two bars. What this is going to do when I press and hold lock on button is search for a heat source within those bars and try to lock it. It will not lock any heat source. It will be intelligent and lock what it deems to be an aeroplane. There's no maximum range because it's IR again. It's just all about the contrast. We can see him there. You don't have to be able to see them, but obviously it helps get them between the bars. I'm going to push and hold lock on. And we've acquired the same lock again. It's passing information to the missiles. All missiles can see the laser range fires fired. And it's done everything that we need to. I'm going to back off a little bit further and we're going to continue in this vein. Next, we're going to try our helmet-mounted sight, known as Helms. Press the helm bind there. We need to drop our helmet monocle, which is HMS monocle there. I'm going to press that. Let it drop down. Pretty simple how this works. I'm just going to pause and explain the symbology. You can see our reticle which can be in four states, as I'll show here from the manual. Solid circle in solid circle is just basic, telling you it's ready to use. If we have segmented circles flashing with no crosshair, then it has acquired a lock with the IRST and passing on to the missiles. But it doesn't know that you're in kinematic range to fire because at this point, almost certainly, you will not be within laser range. I'll try and show that. If it's a full circle with a crosshair, then it's gained an IR and a radar track, and you're within kinematic parameters to fire. Finally, similar but segmented, it means there's no additional radar lock, it's just IR lock, otherwise you're in parameters to fire. So let's try and show that off. In terms of our azimuth coverage, 60 degrees left, if I just unhook my IR there. If I go past 60 degrees, it disappears, obviously you can't use it. I'm gonna go 60 degrees right. We can go, sorry, 60 degrees up, 60 I'm saying. And we can go 14, sorry, one, four degrees down because you don't need to go down very far. Obviously, in terms of range, again, there is no range limit. It depends on the contrast it can achieve. Now, before I try and lock him, I just want to get outside of three miles, 3.3 uh, miles, I mean. Yep, we're outside, okay, that's good. So, I'm gonna unpause. Symbol, obviously, put the thing on the thing push and hold lock on what we're going to get is the flashing uh, segmented circles what that means if i pause the irst has got the track it's handed it off to the missiles that you can see below in this case all missiles but we're not within laser ranging so we don't have the crosshair in song speed up get within the 3.5 miles which is going to take a minute 
there we go laser rangers firing at 3.5 miles and ah, interestingly we've got a solid cross there so that means that it's got a radar lock and an ion track and let's just have i forgot to turn my radar off i did the radar's on and that's what i was talking about integration of sensors on this aircraft it's pretty cool stuff and mainly automatic right next i'm gonna i'm pause and slow down i'm gonna break lock and we're gonna go to our next mode which is going to be our opt we get a cursor that we can drive around the cursor is the circle we can drive it around with our acquisition uh, cursor buttons that we were talking about put the thing on the thing press lock and of course you've got an ir lock you're ready to go everything else is the same i'm going to break lock to our next mode which is going to be ball sight a little bit different this one this one negates the irst it does not use it it just uses the selected missile and let's move our ball sight which is the cross of obviously the direction of the aircraft forward see what happens you can see interestingly the lower range missiles have picked up his heat first and you can see they've appeared and that's because they have a slightly wider seeker of detection whereas the alamo is going to be a bit more funnel like and have less angle i'm kind of explaining right you can see now i've picked up the alamo now if i move away alamo's gone and then further away the acm missiles have disappeared obviously once you've got your launch permission just fire like normal next view is guns and this is absolutely brilliant on this plane i love it it's the best gun suite or, or sensor suite for guns i believe out there we can use a radar lock and or an ir lock to use the lead computed mode of the guns which is the first we'll look at so um let's get an ir lock because today i guess is about ir you can choose any of them um uh, ir you can choose cc you can choose helm or you can choose opt I'll choose, I don't know, CC, why not? Let's put in between the things. Let's push and hold lock on, and we've got a lock, okay. Now we're gonna push and hold the gun trigger first, Eaton only, and it switches to gun mode. Undo it, and it goes back to missiles. Do it again, it gets back to gun mode. I'm gonna pause now, and we'll just talk about the symbology. This is super cool, because you can literally be flying around, launching missiles, and quickly switch to gun mode, and then off. Why else is this useful? Well, if you want to highlight where a hostile is while using missiles, quickly switch to gun mode, and it will draw a circle around it, and that's really useful. Speaking of which, obviously, a hostile is highlighted by a circle. Why does it do that? Well, of course, you might not be in perfect visibility like this. It might be at night or whatever, and you can't see him. Until terms of range obviously it has a track and it's within 3.5 miles and it has an ir track and it's a weapons track so we know the range of two point whatever miles that is there wingspan ha huh, that's interesting the wingspan we should set where possible now interestingly i've set the wingspan to what i thought was about 60 feet but it turns out it's about 105 feet so that's me learning on the job i suppose there so we should turn that down really let me do that let me get that something a bit more sensible 50 feet or 60 feet or whatever this aircraft is other symbology the amount of ammo we have is here in quarters four is full one is 25 percent or less Yes. On our range bar here, we've got two ticks here. For reference, that is 800 meters. That is 200 meters, but you don't have to fire between those two if you don't want. In terms of the gun actually firing, we can fire it in a full mode where you can just keep firing it until it runs out of ammo or overheat or whatever. That would be all there. Or you can have burst, which is default, which is the down position. Interestingly, I believe with missiles, if you had that in all, you could fire both of the pair of missiles. Um, and that's it. So what we're going to do is keep pressing first detent of trigger until we get within afterburner on 0.7 nautical miles at which point it's considered that we can start shooting and you'll get your lead computed gun sight there we go uh, needless to say put the cross on the thing and shoot him you can see a wind down cursor around the cross which is winding down as a percentage of 0.7 nautical miles and press the trigger sorry I'm bouncing between all sorts of stuff now and pause obviously do that second stage trigger and you're going to shoot them down finally very quickly if you didn't have a radar track if i lose my track there and i went to go into gun mode you get a gun funnel based on of course the wingspan of the target and put that down to very low all you got to do as all inertial gun funnels is put the wings of the target so they're touching the funnel and fire and invariably you will miss because gun funnels are so freaking impossible to use and i suggest ne ne suggest never trying to use them if you can that's there that's it viewers that's the irsc irsc integration with radar ir guided missiles integration with irst radar modes lead computed gun and inertial gun i hope that was useful and bye bye